Uh, so I'm here with the icon that is Molly Carson. Molly, <laughs> high diving, world silver medalist, yes. Red Bull legend. Thank you. Uh, mental health activist. Absolutely. Influencer. <laughs> Am I missing anything? I don't know. Crazy. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're down here at this amazing venue here yes. in Doha. Uh, it's great to be back for Worlds. Yeah. But talk me through that. Like, this. what made you say, <laughs> I want to do that. Honestly, I was like, how do I get famous? You jump <laughs> off crazy things. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I started in regular diving. Yeah. And you go your whole life. Everyone can kind of do the dives that you can do. And I was like, ew, I want to be different. You know, like at the Olympic level, everyone's doing the exact same dives. I'm like, no one does this. Like, how do I get brave enough to push myself out of, oh my God, my comfort zone? <laughs> To, to see what I can do. And I really wanted to see that side of myself and, and get out there and, and be proud of every single dive I do, because you can be. You hit the water, you're like, I'm alive. I'm this alive. is such a good feeling. <laughs> like every time you high dive, it's this magical moment and we crave that every time. And is that, I'm imagining that that's quite, uh, I don't know if addictive is a quiet word, but yeah. just the rush that you get, right? Yeah. Does that ever go away? Because oh my gosh. That is high. <laughs> I think adrenaline, of course, plays a, a role in this sport and it's fun and you hit the water and it's like, wow, I want to do it again. But fear is the other side of it and it never goes away. Like yeah. I was telling you earlier, you stand up there and you're so high up, you're like, why? Every natural animal instinct in you is like, do not jump. Yes. Whatever you do, do not jump off of this. So you have to tell yourself, like, I'm ready for this, I'm built for this, and you just find a way to settle with fear you get more comfortable with it the more you do it so I'm in my fourth year of high diving now and I'm I'd like to say getting comfortable with fear but getting comfortable it never with fear. goes away getting comfortable I mean that's quite a, an amazing thing to sort of be able to do to be yeah. able to compartmentalize yeah. that uh, it's like a human natural instinct to yeah. save yourself you know you're what like, I mean? Don't do you're it. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. And then to do it, you right. know. And then you're like, find one positive that's going to make me jump off of this. And we train for it. We're so ready for it. But you can't train a lot of it either. That's yeah. another thing. Because it's so hard on the body. Like your, your legs and your knees can't handle that much. You're landing. It's like landing straight legs on a jump on the ground a thousand times a day. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't yeah. do that. And it's so tough. you can't train that much. So you have to mentally know what you're doing which is also very hard <laughs> so what was going through your mind you know you've come from diving you've been on the 10 meter you've been on the springboard you've done all that stuff the first time you stepped up to that 20 meter the first time you jumped off I, what was going through your mind i think i almost threw up i think i threw up in my mouth actually <laughs> i was like what am i doing uh, and i went to go do like a simple front jump i was like how basic can it get you know just just that off 18 meters because in montreal we have 10 meter and then the next one's 18. I was like, that's a pretty big eight meter jump, but I'll try it. I was so excited, like I wanted to do it so bad, but you're like, what am I doing? You know, that, that feeling you get closer and closer and your heart's like out here. It's like beating right out here and, and you just like have to black out. You're like, one, two, three, go. And you just jump. And in the air, it was like, you do 10 meter your whole life. You know, it's what, 2.6 seconds every single time. I felt like time stopped. It was the coolest moment ever. Like I was in the air for five minutes and I was like, I want to do that again. <laughs> I love that. Super. I was like the first time I felt like I was free and flying and I struggle with mental health. We'll get yeah. into that, I'm sure. And so my anxiety, it was the first time it was silent. And I was like, it's just me in the air, no negative thoughts. It was amazing. So for so you, cool. for you, you know, it's like freedom. Yeah. That flying. Exactly. You know. when the moment you leap off that platform, it's you and stillness. It's it's magical. You know, two dives on the first day and two dives on the second day. But like I said, we can't do that many reps. So it's all finals. You wow. don't get a prelim or a final. Every dive counts. And so every dive is important. So it's a one and done. One and done, baby. I just let, do you, do does it. that add pressure? Obviously. <laughs> I'm I spat on you. That's I'm, okay. I'm freaking out. <laughs> But I just want to dive into, you know, you, uh, you know, it's not just sport. Yeah. You've done so much in this and it's something that we're seeing come to the forefront yeah. of with athletes nowadays yeah. is mental health. Yeah. 
something you're very vocal about your struggles <laughs> with. You build up your Brave Gang. Brave Shout out gang. to the Brave Gang. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's something that you've been very vocal with. Yeah. Um, so tell us a bit about that, like how you yeah. how you reached where you are now and as confident you are now yeah. speaking about it. Well, I was super, super lucky with the sport that I'm in that a lot of people were like, I want to watch whatever's going on here. Like, why is she in the roof of a building and wants to jump off? And so I gathered a lot of followers really quickly and I was like, okay, but that's not my goal. Like I have a message that I want to share with the world and it's that you can do way more when you love who you are, you know what I mean? And, and you can't be the best athlete you can be when you hate yourself. And that's what I struggled with in regular diving. It was me against all these amazing talented athletes, but they were so little and tiny. I'm a really tall diver. I'm like 5'8 compared to these little 5'2s nailing their dive for 10s. And I was like, how do I get to that level of spinning that fast? And it was a lot of comparison to other people. Okay. And I didn't feel comfortable in who I was. And I really struggled. I developed an eating disorder, body dysmorphia, just a lot of toxic thoughts going through my mind. But I wanted to do the sport that I love. And there wasn't a nice balance. And so I was like, how can I find, you know, with this platform that I have now, six million people, I'm like, what is happening? Wow. But I want to never let another 16 year old girl hate who they are doing the sport that they love. You know yeah. what I mean? That it's unacceptable. We're all amazing and your body is capable of something beautiful, no matter what it looks like. And I didn't know that being tall had perks. The judges are like, she's so beautiful. She's flying, you know, versus spinning fast. Like there's so many perks to who you are uniquely. And that's really what I promote. And I think that, you know, it's it's a fun message. I get to travel the world and, and share that. And it, it makes what I do so much more worth it. And does that, like, you know, being able to take, like you say, you've got this massive audience yeah. now, like six million is wild, oh you know? <laughs> what is happening? I love yes. it. But to be able to take, you know, what you do and turn it into something to as sort of action real change yeah. with young people must have been an amazing thing for you to realize you could do. Oh my gosh, rewarding. And I was still struggling at the time. Like when I started high diving, I was like, it's terrifying and I don't love myself fully. Like I need to figure this out because no way I'm jumping off that platform if I'm looking, if I care about my cellulite, like who cares? <laughs> when you're that high up, if you have a little bit of cellulite, who cares, you know what I mean? And, and that's what I realized. There's so much more to life than what you look like especially when your life revolves in the three seconds you're about to do. And that was the coolest realization. I was like, it, it doesn't matter when you're swimming, when you're jumping, when you're when you're doing whatever, you're loving it. That's all that matters. And, and you should love yourself, too. So, yeah, now with this following, I'm like, all right, let's go. No more. No more self hate, you guys, because you're so much more successful when when you're kind to yourself. Hey, you know, and that's a really sort of uh, amazing thing to, well, you know, we're all watching this happen yeah. and witness you do this. Yeah. But you know, we've, we've got a lot of young athletes coming up that might be struggling with that yeah. sort of stuff. So like, what's your biggest piece of advice? Athletes exist in a world yeah. that's very different than yeah. your average, you know, human. Yeah. So what advice would you give to a younger athlete yeah. that might be coming up having these struggles and trying to sort of yeah. navigate those mental health issues? Great question. Hi, younger athletes. I love you. I used to be you. And and I used to struggle so hard thinking I was alone in these negative thoughts. Like as an athlete, you're gonna reach so many cycles of, you know, am I good enough? Am I, am I gonna be able to make this team? Am I gonna be able to qualify for this? Or do I look good enough to get a 10? And there's gonna be these thoughts that enter your mind. But if you approach it with kindness, if you approach it with, do you love your sport first? That's number one, not do I look good enough to do my sport? Flipping the mindset is my biggest, biggest recommendation and it's, it's the best way to get out of those ruts. So yes, you're gonna have negative thoughts, but if you can recognize the negative, I've done a lot of therapy on this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if you can recognize that negative thought and just back it up with true statements. Okay, but I can get tens. Okay, but I have done this before. I have raced that fast. There's just ways to remind yourself that you're awesome and you are awesome and you can do it. So, really cool. You know who else is awesome? Molly Carson. <laughs>